All right, we're going to talk about AK-47 bayonets, my favorite subject of all gun subjects, and we're going to talk about Chinese AK-47 bayonets in particular because of this cool Type 81 that I finally acquired uh, thanks to some good friends, and I really appreciate that. I got it at a great price. So uh, let's talk about them. We've got quite a few different ones here on the table. I'm only missing one, really. Uh, there's a couple of variations I probably still miss, but uh, we're really only missing one major type of bayonet here on the table. We've got some old AK-47 bayonets, got a bunch of different spikes. Then we've got some of these Type 2s. They didn't really have a Type 1 in China, so they jumped straight to Type 2. Now, these were never actually used by the PLA, or the People's Liberation Army in China. These were only uh, made for export into the U.S. with all those semi-auto uh, Chinese AKs we got. And then, of course, the Type 81, which isn't really an AK so much as a variant, but uh, I guess this might have been used. I'm really not a, an expert on those. But uh, let's take a look. Like I say, we have some AK-47 bayonets here. First off, an AK-47 bayonet is a little different than the standard AKM style that we're more familiar with, with our Romanians and Yugos and Bulgarians and all that. Uh, these attach with the ring around the muzzle and then the attachment point in back, where the AK-47 style attaches with its attachment point in the front. Now, I don't have an AK-47 actually to show you, but I can kind of demo it on this AKM. We've got a muzzle nut that goes over the muzzle, and then the back end just kind of hangs there, and it would attach a little tighter, of course, with an AK-47. But on the bottom of the front sight, there would be two little teeth, and they would lock into the connection mechanism here. Then the bayonet would kind of lock on, and then you would pull up here, and it would come off. So a little different than the AKMs. We had two different styles of AK-47 bayonets imported from China. The first off is this darker color. It's a Chinese chi wood however you say it, but uh, it's stained darker for the Polytex that came in. And then later, this one was ever actually imported with a rifle, but it's stained a little oranger. Now, I've also seen a yellow version, uh, almost a yellow wood, that I'm guessing was just a variation of this imported one. Then we have some different spikes. There were, let's see, two different blade lengths on the spikes, a couple of different blade shapes, and then a couple of different attachment points, a couple of three different attachment points, and I have a sample of each of those. Starting off with the shorter one, we have the standard style attachment. Um, then we have one that's the contained attachment, we'll talk about that. Then we've got the third style attachment, which is the clamp-on, uh, which was designed like an afterthought for some of them that were imported without spikes. And like I say, there's a couple of different blade lengths. First off, let's look at the basic anatomy of a Chinese spike. It's going to have some sort of an, a hinged attachment point here that is connected to the front sight block usually. But uh, this one is the clamp-on, so it's actually two pieces, but a lot of times that was one piece. Then the spike would kind of disengage from the back of the pivot there, and it would come along and it's spring-loaded, and then it would uh, sometimes have a ring. Most of the time it just had a hook, and that would hook to the front of the front sight. Now this one's a little unique. This one's the clamp-on. We'll take a closer look at that in a second. This first style, though, we'll take it apart so you can see the, how the insides work. This is just a little rivet that uh, is holding it together because the spring tension here would let this pop out. So we've got the hook, the spring, and then the bayonet itself. And some of the things about the bayonet is it's the shape here underneath the hook, and then of course the hook shape itself. And again, I'm just pushing this little rivet in here to keep it from falling apart. But basically, it works very much like this one, except again, the attachment point would have been different. And it would come along, actually it would have been put on like this when it's closed. When it opens up, there would have been a little hook at the front of the front sight there, and that hook would connect right there. The second style, notice doesn't need any kind of pin to hold it together because it has a pin here that keeps it retained. And it was another style, uh, actually from the, uh, there's an SKS style for the SKSD, and then for some of the AKs, there was this style. And you would pull down, attach it to the pivot, and then it would come up and lock again with the little hook, and then it would come back and the pivot would also keep it closed as well. So this is a self-retained, this one is the not self-retained. And then this is what the clamp-on looks like when it's not attached to the rifle. You can see that there's two screws there, and then this like hole, where you, I'll show you where that goes in a second, and then it would look like this when it's closed. And well, we'll show you on the rifle, it's a lot easier. This is what it looks like when it's closed. Again, you pull forward, you're on that spring, and it comes up, and this one has a ring, very much like an SKS, and it would only work with the muzzle nut. If you put a brake or anything on there, of course, it's not gonna clear. Now, I mentioned that little hole. 
what you would do when you bought this after after the fact is you'd pull out the there's two pins that hold the front sight on you'd pull out that rear one you'd put this on with the screwdrivers and everything then you'd get a second pin that was a little longer and you'd drive that through so it was on there real good and secure and then you had in effect a folding spike for your AK if it didn't come with one one thing to mention when you have a folding spike is you need a lower handguard that has a channel for it so that it has a place to to go otherwise it sort of just hangs off like this and you get stabbed all the time with it so that's the uh, the underfolder what's kind of nice about these underfolders is they were imported from a guy here in Tucson not only was I able to find some but even better than that I'll put in a picture of the crate that they came in I own one of those crates and then this kind of a mess here anybody's familiar with Cosmoline this like Cosmoline massive goop here inside of this plastic bag is one of my prized possessions because again this is very difficult to obtain if you don't know the importer this is how they came out of that Chinese crate wrapped three to a bundle with this crazy wax paper and they're just gross with Cosmoline so that's literally how they came out of the crate and I have the crate once the crate was empty he uh, let me buy that and then I got one package like this that were still in the original wrapper and Cosmoline and as a collector, of course, that's kind of fun. This is what they look like when you wipe all the Cosmoline off, and then that's what they look like on a rifle. All right, so next, look at the next tile uh, spike, which is basically the same, just a longer blade. These are about 30 centimeters. These are about 25 centimeters. And now there were two types of blades, and let's take a look at those. They're both, they're all triangles. If you cut them in half here, it would be a triangle, as opposed to a Mosin Nagant, which has got four sides. But there's two different points and you can see them here the one on the left is the chisel type and the one on the right is the point and it's just a different type of grind and again chinese just you know they didn't do everything consistently so that gives us variance as collectors a little different at the top as well but these are both the hook style connector and neither one of them are self-retained so they both have a screw or something to hold them to, so they don't pop apart and I mentioned that the shape there is different than something like an SKS bayonet. And there is a way to tell them from an SKS bayonet. Here's an SKS bayonet. Same thing, you have to put a screw or something in there to retain it. But we've got the same similar pieces. We've got this thing which goes over the muzzle nut. We've got the spring that's all gross with Cosmoline. But look at the shape of an SKS bayonet. It's very simple. And it's just basically a, a rectangle if you were to cut it in half. Let's put that back together real quick. And we'll compare that with an S, with an AK bayonet. Same pieces, just it's a hook type of connector. And the spring was in there, so... But anyway, look at the shape here. This shape is designed when it folded forward to go basically with the shape of the, the front of the AK, which is, of course, different than the AK, or the SKS. There is some differences on the bayonet blades themselves. In other words, you can't take an AK... 47 spike and put it on an SKS even though a lot of people like to think these are all the same All right, so there's a lot of different spikes out there and China was the only one that used spikes for the AKs next we have the the imported ones the AKM or the type 2 and The Bible of all AK bayonet collectors Kalashnikov bayonets by Martin Ivey uh, Actually doesn't even have every variant in there, and I don't think it's any fault of his it's just that you know, there's a lot of Chinese inconsistencies out there. And overall, we have a black one for the first Calico rifles that were imported, and then the red ones, which were all the, the later semi-autos. Uh, like I mentioned, there's one that I'm missing here, and I'll talk about that one separately in a second. But like I mentioned in, in the book of uh, Bayonets, he doesn't really go into the variations. And honestly, I have a little debate going along with the other uh, big AK Bayonet collectors out there about if these are actually variants or not. But first off, I think there's one that we can all agree on, and that's that there's the original black ones, like I say, that came with the calicos, which had the black furniture. But you'll notice, and it might not show up real good on video here, but this one has a green tint to it. And in the sunlight, it's very obvious. In enough room lighting, or the right kind of room lighting, it can become apparent. Typically, if I put them next to each other like this, I can sometimes get a good photo of it. But what it was, was whatever the resin that they used in these kind of had a green tint to it, so that became a variant. And again, I was lucky enough to know one of the importers, and he let me basically spend an afternoon going through all his bayonets to grab the ones that had the most green in them, and this is the most green one I could find. There are greener ones out there 
that guys just happen to you know come across but that's my example of a green and it almost looks like OD green to me it definitely has some molting or some squirrel to it so that's a variant next up we have the red ones now typically your red one looks like this and I'm gonna use this Russian example to kind of show you the differences between a standard AKM or type 2 bayonet than the uh, Chinese one you can see that you know from a couple of feet away they look similar but the main difference is because they didn't have the wire cutter none of this stuff on the bottom of the sheath was there and it has a different shape but otherwise it looks very much like the the Russian versions uh, so we have no wire cutter at the bottom and obviously we have no hole on the blade for that either there's also no saw blade on the back of the blade so it's a very plain blade compared to most of the other AKM bayonets out there and it's very easy to identify a Chinese because again there's nothing going on at the bottom of the sheath there however you might notice there's a few of these on the table so let's take a look this one is again your your kind of run-of-the-mill standard one and for the longest time you could buy these for five or ten dollars at gun shows we have another one here which we call the brass pin and on the Chinese ones, the way that they put it together is they put a pin here and they finished it and never came through the other side. For whatever reason, again, consistency difference or whatever, the different factories put them together differently, we have a brass pin that goes to this one. For the longest time, these were real hard to find. Notice there's a Phillips screwdriver there and a straight there. So, again, just inconsistency beyond between the, comp the factories. This one I only have on the table to show that this one came through as it's on its own. It wasn't included with the rifle and it says made in China there and I think it says made in China there as well. Interesting that these were all serial numbered even if they didn't come with an AK. Lastly again this is one that we kind of debate whether or not this is a variant but if you can tell from the video between this like standard one and this one there's no brass pin but this one looks like it's made out of like clay or something that hardened. This one looks like it's the fiberglass and stuff very different material in my opinion. This one almost looks like an Indian bayonet from India. Not physically, but the material. And this one looks a lot more finished. And usually the Chinese were pretty proud of their stuff. So I'm not sure if this one was from somewhere else or if it was just bottom of the batch type of materials. But there's a big difference when you look at these two between the quality of this one and this one. So again, we have some debate as to, as to whether this is actually a variant. You notice on some of these I have these uh, well, what they call their their belt attachment horrible horrible belt attachment typically an AK bayonet is going to have what they call a frog which clips onto the scabbard it has a snap or some sort of retention for the bayonet itself and then a way to attach it to a belt the reason they did this as a kind of a quick release is because the AK bayonets are designed to cut wires and they're insulated so you can take this off completely from your belt cut your electric barbed wire or whatever you needed to do and then put it back on your belt. You didn't have to take your belt off to get access to that wire cutting ability on your bayonet. However, on the Chinese ones, since they were never actually used by the uh, PLA and never used in combat or anything, and only sent over here for import, they came up with this little crazy clip. And it's super flimsy. It's made out of like pot metal, even though it's sheet metal. Just super easy to bend. They're garbage. This one you can see the chrome fell off and it's just rusting really bad, but happy to have them. They're very hard to find. Uh, they were basically lost. They weren't attached to the bayonet in the... I'll see if I can find a picture of what the old uh, styrofoam uh, box looked like. People thought they were for the sling, for the rifle, and they couldn't figure out a way to get it on their sling, or if they did it would fall right off because it's got a big gap right here. Um, so they were lost real easily. One of my prized possessions is this black one, because usually they're chrome. And again, very hard to find. If you know what you're looking for at a gun show, uh, you can really, you know, find some collectibles. So that's the, the majority of them. I said that there's one I'm missing, and the re another reason I have this one out here is that this is what it looks like. And it has the wire cutter, and it has the hole for the wire cutter, and it does have the saw. For the longest time, all the collectors thought they were just Russian ones. However, on the and they were only imported with their version of the uh, SVD, the long... Uh, sniper type of rifle and uh, the thing is on the Russian ones they're always marked with their factory and stamps and stuff the Chinese ones have no markings at all there's some subtle Chinese markings but I honestly don't have one to uh, compare or check it out but they look similar to this very hard to find so if you find what you think is a Russian one but there's absolutely no markings on it you may have found a fairly rare Chinese version and then lastly we have the Type 81 which is totally different really uh, same materials and it is an AK variant 
totally different bayonet though in just about every respect. Kind of odd, really hard to find these. You can find them if you want to go on Gunbroker and pay the arm and a leg, but again, I was able to find this one just on chance from uh, some friends and real happy to acquire it. So that's some AK bayonets from China. I uh, used to be able to buy these ones for, like, like I say, five or ten dollars at gun shows, and now they're more like thirty. Uh, the spikes, good luck. It's almost impossible to find them. Sometimes people think they have SKS bayonets or Nagant bayonets, and it's really an AK bayonet. You just have to know what you're looking for. As far as the AK-47s, we'll have to do another video on how to identify all the different AK-47 bayonets from each other, but there's some Chinese versions and some of the stuff to look out for. Hope you find some of the stuff at gun shows. If you do, let me know. If you have any questions about them, feel free to leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching. The guys and gals at GunWebsites.com encourage you to take a CCW class every year, practice at least once a month, and carry every day. Thanks for watching GunWebsites.com.